Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Danielle Prendeville. I am the team lead on the international affairs team here at the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. We will be getting started very shortly. Um, we're just going to wait for all of our attendees to join the meeting. Um, but before I get started, um, I would like to let you know that this, this video will be recorded today, so you will be able to view back any information that you'd like to rewatch late, at a later date. Um, and also, we will have a question and answer session at the end of this webinar. So if you see at the bottom of the screen, there is a Q&A section. So if you have any questions, please pop them in that Q&A section. And um, also, just to let you know, we are still currently in some COVID restrictions here in Ireland. So you'll see from our speakers today, we're all at home and from different locations. So we do apologize for that. Um, so for our session today, we have a number of presentations for you. We'll be starting with Professor Mary Horgan. She is our president here at the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. You'll hear from myself and my colleague, Tamsha Tracy, who is the manager of our team. And we also have some information to, let, to give you from a number of our trainers, program directors, and trainees. So we will get started now. I'm going to start with um, Professor Mary Horgan. And again, we'll be back with you soon for a Q&A session. And any questions, please pop them in the below question and answer box. Thank you. Hello, I'm Professor Mary Horgan, President of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. Soon we will be opening applications to our International Clinical Fellowship Programme. This programme offers clinical training to doctors outside Ireland who are sponsored by their government their hospitals or their national training bodies. Through it, you will learn advanced skills that will be beneficial for the health service in your home country. Here at the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, you will find not only world-class medical education, but a warm Irish welcome and full support to help you in your move to Ireland. You will become part of the medical community here in the college and forge lifelong bonds with our large network of physicians, both in Ireland and all around the world. We have a proud tradition of medical education at the Royal College, stretching all the way back to our foundation in 1654. This is a tradition you will become part of by choosing to study with us. I look forward to welcome each sex successful applicant to this programme to the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. Hi everyone, my name is Tempsha Tracy and I manage the international training programmes available through the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. Firstly, I'd just like to welcome you all, or as we would say in Ireland, Cade Milafalche. This means 100,000 welcomes. I appreciate that you're all very busy and we really appreciate the time that you've taken out of your schedules to be with us here today. To begin, I'd like to give you a quick background into Ireland. So as many of you will know already, we're a small island in Western Europe with a wealth of history and culture. We have a population of just under 5 million and a very mild climate. The spoken language in Ireland is English although our native tongue, Irish, is still taught in schools across the country and spoken fluently in a select few areas of the island. We're very well connected um, from a transport point of view with many direct flights uh, between Ireland and the Middle East, um, also with Europe, North America and other geographies. Internationally, we're recognised as a centre for excellence in postgraduate medical training. And as a society, we're known to be safe, stable and friendly. We have a very proud medical and scientific heritage and many of the world's leading surgeons and physicians came from Ireland. I'm sure you'll recognise a couple of the names here from your own studies, um, such as Boyle, Graves and Corrigan. From a technology and life sciences point of view, Ireland is regarded internationally as a world leader. And today, 
the world's top five software companies, along with seven of the world's top 10 technology companies, have operations in Ireland. Our medtech sector has become one of the leading clusters for medical device products globally. Exports of medical devices and diagnostic products now represent 8% of Ireland's total merchandise exports. For example, pre-COVID, 50% of the ventilators used in acute hospitals worldwide were made in Ireland, and 33% of the world's contact lenses are made here. And in all, there are 40 FDA-approved pharma and biopharma plants operating in Ireland, and seven of the biggest blockbuster drugs are manufactured here. We're also the second largest exporter of medtech products in Europe, despite our small size comparative to other countries, with a total of 12.6 billion in annual exports. So why is this important? Well, first of all, because of the investment that we make in research, we enjoy a very strong research ethos across our medical schools and clinical sites. And as such, doctors on Irish training programmes are exposed to research as a core part of their training. And again, because of the investment in research and innovation, we have retained some of the world's leading physicians across all specialties, enhancing training opportunities and training environment here, and thus ensuring that Ireland continues to be one of the leading centres for postgraduate medical training and medical education. To give you a little bit of background to our college then, you may already be aware that we are the oldest and largest postgraduate medical training body in Ireland. Training here is divided up by discipline and in our CPI we house six distinct training bodies responsible for delivering training in the specialties and subspecialties of medicine, paediatrics, obstetrics and gynaecology, pathology, public health medicine and occupational medicine. Our college was established in 1654 and today we offer not just postgraduate medical training but also specialist exams, professional competence schemes, continuing professional development programs, clinical leadership programs, research and quality improvement and assurance programs. We are led by our president Professor Mary Horgan and we have approximately 13,000 trainees, members and fellows across the college, faculties and institutes. Prof Horgan is an infectious diseases specialist, so as you can imagine, she is kept very busy these days. But she's a great supporter of our international programs and she has in the past trained a number of our clinical fellows in the area of infectious diseases. I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Danielle Prendival now, who's going to talk in detail about the training programmes available through our CPI, and I'm going to come back in a little later to talk about the clinical fellowship application process. Hi, good afternoon everyone. <clears throat> my name is Danielle Prendival. I am the team lead on the International Affairs team in the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, and I'm going to go through with you a bit more on the structure of our postgraduate medical training programmes. As many of you may be aware, we have two national programmes, the Basic Specialist Training Programme and the Higher Specialist Training Programme. These correlate with our international programmes. So the Residency Training Programme is very similar to the Basic Specialist Training Programme and the Clinical Fellowship Training Programme is based on the Higher Specialist Training Programme. These are very similar in terms of the structure and content. However, the key difference is the training time and the training duration. Currently, we have 95 graduates across 34 specialties and subspecialties. We have 65 trainees currently on our programmes in Ireland. 55% of our trainees are female and 45% of our trainees are male. And we have trainees currently representing five countries across the Gulf region. Our fellowship programmes are fully accredited by overseas health authorities. We offer hands-on clinical training at a higher level to doctors who have completed their residency training programmes. Our training programmes for fellowship are two to three years in duration, and this is all completed in Ireland. Our curriculum includes clinical training, educational courses and meetings, and structured evaluations. We have um, programmes available across 36 specialties, and the opportunity in most specialties to do a special interest year after you have completed your core training. The certificates that we issue are recognised for registration purposes 
as a specialist in your home country. There are four key aspects to the training in Ireland. The first one is workplace training. So you will be assigned 12 month rotations and these could be on sites across Ireland. You'll be completing training activities outlined within your curriculum. You'll be given ongoing teaching and supervision by your consultant trainer and the wider team that you'll be working with. You'll also be tracking and recording your progress using our e-portfolio system. For educational programs, we offer mandatory and non-mandatory courses. Um, these courses are either online or workshop based courses, which will be participating with other trainees. Some of the courses we offer are leadership, communication and ethics. You'll also be required to complete research and clinical audit on site in your hospitals. Um, throughout your training, you'll also have the opportunity to attend national and international conferences. Um, when it comes to your procedural and practical skills, we do hope that you'll be progressing from supervised to independent in these areas. And throughout your programme, you will receive feedback from your trainers and your consultant trainers via direct observation of procedural skills and mini clinical evaluation exercises. Another important, access, um, another important area is the annual evaluation of your progress. You will be given formal evaluations completed by an interview panel at the end of each year of your training. And we will be measuring your progress against the requirements set out in your curriculum. Um, there's also ongoing competency-based assessments via the direct observation of procedural skills and case-based discussions. These are the current specialties that we offer. Um, as you can see, in internal medicine, we have a wide variety of specialties. These include cardiology, dermatology, endocrinology, geriatric medicine, gastroenterology, infectious diseases, medical oncology, nephrology, neurology, palliative medicine, respiratory medicine and rheumatology. Um, in some cases, we also may offer subspecialty training where capacity allows for that. Um, please get into contact with us if you would like to look into more subspecialty areas. For paediatrics, we offer general paediatrics, paediatric allergy and immunology, paediatric cardiology, paediatric emergency medicine, paediatric endocrinology, paediatric gastroenterology, paediatric hematology and oncology, paediatric infectious diseases, paediatric nephrology, paediatric neurology, paediatric respiratory, paediatric rheumatology, and also neonatology. For obstetrics and gynecology, we have four programs. These are gynecology surgery, labor ward management, maternal medicine, and urogynecology. We also offer programs in occupational medicine and public health medicine, along with a number of specialties within pathology. And we have chemical pathology, clinical microbiology, hematology, histopathology, and immunology. Um, there are different requirements for some of these programs. For example, in um, histopathology, we do have an FRC path part one requirement. So please do get in touch with us for more information on the specific requirements for the program that you're interested in. We do also offer relocation support through our partners, Castell Education. Castell offer a professional registration service to help you register with the Irish Medical Council. They also offer an immigration service to help with your visa applications for yourself and your family if you bring your family with you to Ireland. They also offer concierge services which include accommodation, education for family members and day-to-day -day issues like banking, mobile phones, health insurance and car rentals. You'll also be given a lot of training support within the college. So from our team, you'll be given support and guidance from interview all the way through to graduation. We help with recruitment and selection. We also help with relocation to Ireland. And when it comes to registration and visa requirements, we offer assistance along with our partners, Castell. For your training program requirements, we'll help you progress through your training. We can help you um, sign up for membership exams if you choose to take those. We also liaise with your site and your trainer before you arrive and we can also help you with your progression. And then again, with more. So we, we offer help across every aspect of your training from beginning to end. And as you can see there, um, that is Temsha, the manager on our team, and Laura Kenner, who used to work with us, and to a graduate, Dr. Wada. I'm now gonna hand you over to Temsha Tracy again. I'm just gonna give you a bit more information on the application process. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to take a look at the application process now. 
So as many of you will be aware, we're going to be open for applications from the 1st to the 21st of August. And we plan then to hold our interviews across September to November of this year. The online application form will be available via a link on the RCPI website, specifically on our International Clinical Fellowship Program webpage. You can also request that the link be sent directly to you by email by getting in touch with the International Affairs team at internationalaffairs at rcpi.ie. To have a look at the application process then, once the applications have been submitted, our team here does an eligibility check to make sure that all of the applications meet the entry criteria for the programmes selected. The programme directors then complete a shortlisting exercise during which they identify those candidates that they would like to interview. We would then be in touch with all applicants to update them on whether or not they've been successful in securing an interview with a programme director. Interviews are then carried out via Zoom. So in the past, you might be aware that we would have held some interviews via Zoom and some interviews in a face-to-face -face format in the Gulf. But unfortunately, this year that won't be possible. And we hope that in years to come, we'll be moving back to that format. But for this year, we think that all of our interviews are going to take place via Zoom. So after those interviews are completed, the International Affairs team will be in touch with all of the applicants to let them know whether or not they've been successful in securing an offer for a clinical fellowship position with the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. So who is eligible then? There are a number of entry requirements that are mandatory um, on application and a number then that you can meet afterwards if you don't have them at the time of application. So to apply, you must have completed a medical degree through English. You've, you must have completed a structured internship and a four to five year national residency program and associated board exams. You should have provisional sponsorship by a government body. And that's a government body with whom RCPI has a memorandum of understanding for the provision of training. So if you're not sure whether or not your country already has an agreement in place with RCPI to provide training, you can email us at the address that I mentioned previously at internationalaffairs at rcpi.ie and we can confirm that for you. Lastly, then, you should have an appropriate level of clinical experience, and this is as determined by the programme director for your specialty. So it does vary from specialty to specialty. For those applicants that are successful in securing an offer of a place with us, they would have to then meet the English language uh, competency requirement and have confirmed sponsorship by the time they start in post in Ireland. So for the English language, that's an academic IELTS of overall seven or an OET of B. Now, some applicants would have the English language requirement and confirmed sponsorship at the time of application, and that's fine. Um, there are those then that don't have them. And again, that's okay. As long as you have them within the time frame that we indicate to you ahead of moving to Ireland, that's perfectly okay. There are a number of components then that aren't mandatory to take up a fellowship position with us, but they are desirable and they might give a candidate a competitive edge um, during the selection process. So really those candidates that can demonstrate that they have the full English language requirement, confirmed sponsorship and maybe also have the MRCPI exam, the membership of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland exam, may be given preference during the selection process by the programme directors. So what makes an application stand out then? This is a question that we get asked a lot. And really that's a CV that's well structured, where the information contained within the CV and the application form is clear and comprehensive. It includes a detailed overview of education, training and experience to date. The additional documents required have been attached to the, C to the application. So if you have the English language component, that's an IELTS cert or an OET cert. And then the applicants that can demonstrate an interest in their selected specialty, perhaps through experience in the specialty area, through attendance at courses or research activities related to the area will again stand out to the programme director. Those applicants that can demonstrate experience in research, possibly in other areas, not necessarily related to specialty, participation in clinical audit. And as I mentioned, maybe they have the MRCPI exam as well. 
again, these applications will stand out to the program director on review. But it's important to say that you shouldn't despair if you don't yet have extensive experience in your specialty, if you haven't had the opportunity to participate in research or to take an additional exam such as the M or CPI. Really a well-structured clear CV and application form is key um, that where they demonstrate that you meet the eligibility criteria for the program that you've applied for. Those are really the key parts of a strong application form. I've included contact information for the International Affairs team here and I encourage you to reach out to us. So as you know, we're going to have a question and answer section coming up shortly. But if you have any questions or comments or feedback on anything that you don't get the chance to express today, please feel free to contact us at any time. So finally, I just want to thank you for your time today. I hope this information has been useful for you and I look forward to answering any questions that you have towards the end of our session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today on this webinar. My name is Conal Dennedy. Um, I'm a consultant endocrinologist at um, Galway University Hospital in the West of Ireland. I'm a senior lecturer in therapeutics at the National University of Ireland, Galway. And um, in addition to that, I'm the training lead for endocrinology um, for the Royal College of Physicians uh, of Ireland uh, International Clinical Fellows Programme. So I will cover, first of all, the um, specialty offerings that we give within medicine. So within medicine, we cover a very broad range of clinical specialties, uh, which uh, includes uh, the interventional and the non-interventional specialties within medicine. So this ranges, of course, from craft specialties such as cardiology, uh, gastroenterology, respiratory medicine, um, all the way through to the non-craft specialties and the non-interventional specialties such as uh, rheumatology, for example, um, and um, um, endocrinology. And we also cover specialties such as uh, haematology and uh, oncology. So within this, our fellows are offered their schemes within their specialty of choice where they get um, hands-on experience-based training. And this is the very essence of the training that we provide our fellows. It must be hands-on experience-based training where they have a high uh, contact level with patients on a daily basis. This covers a very broad case mix of patients, which they're asked to record in their logbook, um, both for assessment purposes and also so that um, they can have a logbook record of the training that they received when they returned to their home country. They also are offered within this the opportunity to upskill in their procedural skills, particularly for the craft specialties. And of course, uh, they develop through this and through their involvement in, in, the, um, in the team, uh, they develop a, a, a good appreciation of the multidisciplinary team structure, which re really forms the basis of modern medical excellence. So these are the uh, fundamentals that we offer our fellows when they come to work in Ireland. All fellows, importantly, are offered a structured curriculum. Now, this structured curriculum includes their training requirements and they are assessed on a yearly basis um, on this structured curriculum. So for those within the procedural specialties, there will be a certain number of procedures that they will need to have carried out and these will be assessed on a yearly basis. For those within the more clinical specialties, there will be a certain number of different types of subspecialty clinics which they need to uh, attend and a certain number of patients within those clinics that they will need to see and these of course again will be assessed on a yearly basis. And that is all within the two-year scheme that we offer to all fellows. Then, for a certain number of fellows, they may want to enter a third year of the specialty training program um, to look at um, specific areas that they're interested in. And for those who enter the third year of subspecialty training, uh, we sit with them and we organise a tailored plan, which is agreed between the trainee themselves, the trainer, and the training lead in order to best provide the experience that the fellow needs. And the reason that a tailored plan is needed here is that sometimes, for example, in my own specialty, somebody may want to do adrenal medicine and neuroendocrine tumours. So we would mix those two um, uh, curricula that we have developed for those together. 
in order to best facilitate that fellow. On the other hand, another fellow may wish to do thyroid cancer and neuroendocrine tumours. Or alternatively, another fellow may want to do adrenal medicine and pituitary medicine. So therefore, there requires a tailored plan for these individuals. And of course, we always correspond with the home country in order to see what are the clinical needs of the home country for service development for these fellows uh, in the future. And this is an important aspect of the way that we train our fellows. We are constantly um, training our fellows with a view to the service development that they will provide to their home countries in order to improve and develop the medical systems in their own countries and of course to promote collaboration between us and the home countries to which our fellows return. Research and audits lie at the core of patient management. Through audits we compare our current practice of international standard of best practice uh, to inform the outcomes of what we do well and importantly how we can improve. We then institute uh, and modify our practice where necessary to offer the best standard of patient care and then we re-audit to ensure that whatever intervention to improve patient care has worked. Within the International Clinical Fellows Programme we encourage all of our fellows to perform a yearly audit and they are assessed on this basis. Moving on to research, through research, we innovate our patient management and medical practice into the future. Through research, we create those new standards of international best practice that we will audit ourselves upon in the future. In Ireland, we excel in the areas of biomedical engineering, medical device development, population health medicine, bioinformatics, systems biology, genomics, and the gut microbiome. And we have several research institutes which are spread across our several universities, including University College Dublin, Trinity College Dublin, Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, National University of Ireland, Galway, and University College Cork. We apply our research excellence to, through a broad range of disorders from vascular disease to oncology to neurodegenerative disease to hematologic malignancy. What is important within the International Clinical Fellows Programme is that many of our trainers have large internationally well-funded research programmes and many of our trainers are very well world-renowned researchers in their area. We invite all international fellows to experience this with us. We encourage our fellows to understand the importance of research, to consider the role of a higher degree such as an MD or a PhD in their future careers, and to experience very importantly the spirit of research collaboration and how that happens across an international community in order to provide the best outcomes for patients. We encourage each fellow to publish at least one internationally peer-reviewed article throughout the period of their International Clinical Fellowship. And personally, I provide one-to-one -one mentorship with any of the International Fellows that come onto my programme to ensure that we can best facilitate them as not only a future clinical leader, but also a future research leader. Within the medical training scheme, we value teaching and mentorship very highly. All of our trainees attend multiple teaching sessions in addition to their regular hand-on clinical training. Uh, they would attend their societal study days, study days which have been organised for higher specialist training in Ireland. And they're also involved in local hospital-based study sessions, which include medical grand rounds, a weekly journal club, departmental case presentations, and of course, topic-based educational sessions. In addition to this, there is one-to-one -one mentorship and teaching with the trainer through hands-on clinical experience with um, their trainer. And in addition to that, they get weekly case run-throughs where they go through cases of patients that they have seen and through reflective learning are able to see how their um, uh, management of these patients has matched up with clinical best practice. Peer-to-peer -peer mentorship between international fellows and, of course, 
between international fellows and those on higher specialist training schemes in Ireland is extremely important. In addition to that, mentorship is very much at the core of what we offer and the international clinical fellows that come to Ireland are completely absorbed into the team in which they find themselves. They're a complete member of that team, they receive the same training as everybody else on that team, and they have the same responsibilities as everybody else in that team. And this is something which sets us apart and which certainly um, is an experience that the trainees themselves enjoy to be a valued equal member of the team across the board. I hope that uh, this information has been useful to you and of course I will be delighted to take questions in relation to um, anything that I have uh, mentioned today during this webinar. Thank you very much. My name is Nahad and I came from Bahrain. Um, it's in the Gulf area. Um, I came last year, started in Cork University Hospital and currently I'm in St. James's Hospital and I'm do doing my fellowship in infectious diseases. I have chosen the uh, Royal College of Physicians uh, in Ireland because I know there are plenty of places that uh, offers a fellowship but RCPI is well known, prestigious institution. I thought that uh, it would be an, or an honor to have a fellowship uh, certificate. I think uh, even back home it's well known and uh, very recognized and uh, not even, not only back home but worldwide. What I really wanted from my fellowship is not only the uh, clinical experience, it was other life experience, let's say that. Uh, being in a different country, different culture, um, different uh, hospital style and system has given me great opportunity to grow and to um, explore uh, different areas. I think uh, having the opportunity to do uh, research has been uh, the biggest thing for me here and presenting some of my work in the national and international meetings. I think it's a great experience and uh, the team has been very supportive in uh, giving me the uh, adequate, let's say, knowledge that can help going ahead and doing uh, even simple audits uh, in the hospital setting, which I think is uh, one of the most important uh, aspects in training because sometimes we just focus on uh, the, let's, I always call it this two-way learning, giving and taking. But I think what I really learned here is that there's a third dimension um, in learning medicine, which is the reflective learning. You sit down, you reflect, and you learn. And then the monthly meeting with the consultant has been of great help as well, because they, they help you focus on your pathway and then give you advices. And I think it's really very uh, constructive and very positive. Hi, my name is Ghanem Salem. I'm from Kuwait, and I work as a consultant in internal medicine and gastroenterology. I want to talk to you today about my experience in Ireland. I joined the International Fellowship Programme run by the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland in 2015. I have to say, staying away from home during that time was difficult. Yes, it keeps you away, you feel homesick, but the program was great. The experience I got from joining that program helped me a lot to move on in my career. The experience you see with variety of patients you have to treat and you go through a lot of emergencies, ward, services and of course the skills when I was doing the endoscopy. It was great and I think it, it, it helped me a lot to move in my career. The mentor, the teachers, the consultants, they were there all the time to help me and guide me through that time. The help I get from the Royal College it is also was great. There is always somebody you can talk to if you have any problem or difficulties in the program. At the beginning of the year, you always sit down with your mentor and to put your plan for the year. What 
you expect and what do you want from the program and what the skills you need to improve yourself or the weakness to cover. And there is always the time when you sit down with your consultant during that year, every three months, every two months, or on a daily basis. It depends on how you agree with your consultant. This always pushed me to work hard and to get the best out of me to run through that program. I had a very great experience in dealing with tough patients, with difficult cases, and with the easy ones as well, and always found help on my back. The program has its unique features where it gives you the chance in the last few months or last few time of your uh, program to be a consultant. You run the things as a consultant. It, gives, it shapes you up to make the right decisions and to move on. I have to summarize my uh, um, experience in uh, joining the Royal College of Physicians in the International Fellowship Program by one word. Do it. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Declan Cody. I'm the Pediatric Clinical Lead for the International fellowship uh, training program for paediatrics and i'm also a paediatric endocrinologist space in uh, crumlin children's hospital in dublin and i'm here today to talk to you all a bit more about the international fellowship training program uh, in ireland and which is more i suppose more specifically based uh, within the large uh, dublin uh, teaching hospitals so uh, the paediatric fellowship program is essentially a two-year uh, training program it is clinically based and as the international fellow, you will be integrated very quickly into the team. And as time goes on, you, you will be expected to take a more senior clinical role in terms of uh, patient care. So a lot of the activity will be uh, seeing acutely unwell uh, patients specific to your area of interest, um, on the wards, in intensive care, providing consults from other teams. And of course, a lot of the work then will be um, outpatient as well, where the more complex and more chronic patients you will be uh, reviewing uh, while you're based within uh, that specialty. So uh, different specialties will offer different core uh, training. Uh, for example, in respiratory, you would be exposed to bronchoscopy. In, in cardiology, it would be echocardiography and, and the more detailed and intensive uh, cardiac uh, training uh, areas that you'd be expected to be, participate in. Um, there are different specialties on offer uh, for training uh, within the program, including my own of endocrinology, respiratory, uh, rheumatology, cardiology, immunology, general pediatrics, and uh, genetics as well. So there's a huge uh, opportunity for, uh, for trainees to come to Ireland, get immersed within uh, a, a, spe a specialty, and get exposed to a high volume of uh, complex uh, clinical cases relative uh, which would be really relevant uh, to your training as part as well as that you will have access to a large volume of uh, rcpi college-based uh, teaching so there are courses and uh, study days uh, which are part of the specialist registrar training program and which the international fellows have free access to both online and uh, for actually attending in person. So some of these courses are generic, they include uh, such things as leadership training, communications, how to perform audit, ethics courses, uh, that sort of thing. And there's, and there's also, and there would be opportunities to attend uh, training and study days which are more relevant to your area of interest and that can of course be discussed with your consultant uh, supervisor. And there are also things uh, such as online masterclasses, which you will have access uh, to. So as the as your two year fellowship progresses, as I mentioned earlier, you will be expected to uh, take a bigger lead uh, within the specialty team. And we will be working very closely with your uh, uh, registrar colleagues in terms of working out the 
who takes which responsibilities for the uh, for the week. You're very much encouraged to get involved in audit and research, and that really should be part of your two-year program. That when you start, that you should have uh, fairly quickly decide what area you would like to be involved in, and hopefully that that will come up some uh, some research or some audit that can be presented at meetings or even perhaps uh, submitted to international journals uh, for peer uh, review. You'll be involved in the uh, within your in in departmental um, training days, and again, be expected to take a lead uh, in making sure that uh, that journal clubs, for example, are occurring on a regular basis. So, I think this is a great opportunity for uh, aspiring specialist paediatricians and general paediatricians uh, to come to Ireland, work within teams. Uh, that are very focused on delivering the top quality clinical care and are very much focused on in on audit and research as well to support that clinical care. And I very much encourage you to uh, think about uh, the Irish Fellowship Training Programme and uh, look forward to maybe meeting some of you uh, either in person or perhaps online if you do apply and are shortlisted for interviews. So all the very best. Hello, uh, I'm Michaela Lacey. I just finished my uh, fellowship in pediatric rheumatology and uh, I'm living in Ireland for the last two years. So um, um, just I want to uh, let you know that there is no magic spell that will uh, speed up the uh, settling in process. So um, living in a new place is a challenge, but it's a matter of time until you get what's going on and you will enjoy your journey. Living in Ireland was uh, beyond my expectations. Um, uh, Ireland is a lovely place, um, has a lot of uh, nature, beauty and history and um, it's full of brilliant, funny Irish people. Um, the things that I want to talk first is the climate. It can be unpredictable and your umbrella and raincoat will be your best companion. Um, but um, believe me, summer can be amazing in Ireland and you can enjoy it whenever you just plan for a picnic or short trip or long, even long trip and the weather does not help or have a little surprise for you. Um, just go with your plans, enjoy your time and deal with it. Um, uh, transportation in Ireland is very handy. There is bus and Lewis and Dart that connect the cities of Ireland and um, it's easy to uh, use it. Um, I've been using the public transportation for the last two years and um, it was not in my country as uh, popular as here, but um, I, it, was, it was very handy and easy to use. Also, um, there is a lot of nice places to uh, be discovered in Ireland. There is lovely landscapes and uh, for family, if you have a family, there is little farms uh, with um, activities for kids and parks everywhere. Just go and enjoy, discover the new parks around you and um, there is playgrounds indoor and outdoors for the kids. And there is a lot of lovely surrounding beaches like Don Larry and Hooth. Uh, just Google a lot of places and it's all full of, museum, of, of museums. If you are a fan of history, you will love it. And um, last thing, um, the most uh, important thing is the different, the cultural difference between Irish people and other cultures. Um, Irish people have sense of humor and have they start their conversation with banter. Uh, it's, a ta it's a matter of time then you will uh, navigate your, um, you learn how to navigate your mindset um, to the way that will help you when you stumble to their um, cultural difference than your own.
one. So, um, for example, once I was in the park uh, eating my sandwich and an old man came to me and asked me, can I have a bite? I was thinking, is he serious? And then um, just seconds and he starts to laugh and I got that this is the Irish panther which can be never um, it's it's it, the Irish panther cannot you cannot find it anywhere else um, Irish people are lovely like to smile and like to start the conversation usually with um, uh, with a nice sentence about weather or mention a funny um, think that's just happened taxi drivers like to chat with you and uh, you will enjoy it um the 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 most the things that i love the most about ireland is um irish people and irish scone and of course the uh lovely landscapes um and uh, last thing i just um want to um wish best of luck for you and enjoy your journey in Ireland that you will discover it's much more than just learning journey you will end up having unforgettable memories and uh, you will gain a lot best of luck my name is Joe McGarry I'm CEO of Castell Education and my colleague our postgraduate coordinator Hannah Flynn joins me for this session today. Castell partners the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland to support their doctors coming on their fellowship and residency programs. We started out as a company some 10 years ago working in the undergraduate field. Our main focus was and is in medicine, and we provide pathway programs. Uh, for the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the National University of Ireland in Galway, and the University of Limerick. We have expanded our portfolio of programmes to include pharmacy, podiatric medicine, nursing and midwifery, speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, and paramedic studies. Castell's role is to provide the English language component of the pathway programme but also we project manage the programme on behalf of the universities. We liaise with students, really with the ministries, and the cultural bureaus, and with the individual universities. Our partners include, obviously, the Royal College of Physicians, College of Anethesis, the Irish College of General Practitioners, and the Faculty of Radiology. And finally, RCSI in the postgraduate area. And at undergraduate level, we work with RCSI with the National University of Ireland in Galway and the University of Limerick. One feature that we've developed over the past four years has been Castell Connected. We provide online English language training for doctors who have yet to reach the minimum language requirement. We prepare them for their exams in IELTS or OET. Castell Connected is a unique video-based platform which is accessible worldwide using a PC, tablet, laptop or smartphone. Each doctor is assigned a personal tutor for one-to-one -one tuition and we are, classes are arranged to facilitate the doctor's own schedule back at home. Briefly, we provide a range of services to each doctor coming to Ireland. We advise on medical council registration, on visa applications, including family visas, accommodation, educational needs of children, arrival arrangements in Ireland, including airport pickup. Hannah will just describe some of these services now for you. Thank you, Joe. So once uh, a doctor has met all the requirements for their programme, RCPI will refer them to us here at Castell. 
And the first thing that we will begin to work with you on is your medical counselor registration. So we'll invite you to have a video call as we believe this is the best way to show you on screen the various links and steps involved in the medical counselor registration process. We will provide you with a detailed and easy to follow step-by-step -step guidelines for each stage in the process, both EPIC and Medical Council. We will review your application form with you and your supporting documents so your application is fully prepared before submission. When your work permit has been issued, we will send you guidelines on applying for your visa. And these will include visa advice notes in both English and Arabic. We can review your online visa application form with you before you submit and can provide you with templates for some of the supporting documents required. We will also give you advice on applying for visas for your family members. So for example, your spouse and children who may accompany you for the duration of your programme. Uh, securing accommodation here in Ireland may be something that you will think about uh, in advance, but rest assured that we here at Castell will support you every step of the way. We will give you advice on temporary accommodation options, hotels and short stay apartments for your initial weeks here in Ireland. We will work with you to establish your accommodation preferences and based on your requirements, we can send you links to permanent accommodation options for your consideration. In the week leading to your arrival, we will arrange appointments for you to view properties that you were interested in. We are happy to liaise with agents or landlords on your behalf and help you to submit applications for any properties that you were interested in renting. We will review your lease for you before you sign and provide you with move-in advice. Then for trainees who have children coming with them to Ireland, their educational needs may also be on your mind. So we here at Castell, um, once your hospital location has been confirmed by RCPI, we'll work with you to establish your schooling and childcare requirements. We can contact the schools and childcare centres to establish vacancies and will forward you options for your consideration. When you arrive, we are happy to arrange appointments with any of the schools or childcare facilities that you are interested in. Once you send us your travel details, we will arrange a driver to pick up you and your family at the airport and transfer you to your temporary accommodation. Each trainee is provided with a personalised welcome pack upon arrival. And then during this transition period, there will be an out of hour support service available to you. So I'll hand you back to Joe now just to go through some of our other services. Thanks, Anna. You can see the list of different services we provide there, bank accounts, mobile phone accounts, broadband television channels, utilities, care hire insurance, and your health insurance requirements. And we also provide information for local transport facilities, local prayer facilities, ethnic food shops, and local health centres, including GPs. When you arrive in Ireland, you will have to meet Irish immigration requirements and we will guide you in that regard, including the residency permit, re-entry visa applications for children, and if you are visiting a third country for a conference, uh, whatever visas you would, visa arrangements you will require, we will advise you on those. I suppose our, our task at Castell is to ensure that your transfer to Ireland is as seamless, smooth and worry-free as possible. This will allow you to focus on your professional development to the greatest possible extent. We've helped countless doctors transit to Ireland and we hope that we will be in a position to help you. Thank you. So we have come to the end of the presentation section of our webinar now, and I hope you found the information shared today useful. We're going to move on to the questions and answers section. Um, so to begin, I'd just like to introduce you to the panel. You've already heard from myself and Danielle, and we're delighted to be joined today by Dr. Faras El-Karouf, 
who recently graduated from our clinical fellowship program in labor ward management. Um, Dr. Al Karouf is has also um, been appointed while he's been in Ireland by the Saudi Cultural Bureau as the representative of the Saudi Doctors Association in Ireland. So we're due to be joined also by Dr. Connell Dennedy, who you've heard from already, um, but it could be that there are just some technical difficulties at the moment. So when Dr. Dennedy joins, um, if he's able to, hopefully he will be, I'll introduce him formally to you then. So to begin, I would like to direct a couple of questions um, to you, Dr. Al Karouf, if you don't mind. And what I'd like to ask you then, we have a couple of questions that have come in through the, the chat box and we have a couple of questions that were emailed in in the last few days. So could I just ask you first um, what you found most challenging about moving to Ireland and starting your fellowship here? Hi, Tamsha, how are you? First of all, thank you for the introduction. And uh, it's a great pleasure actually to be with you today and to uh, help actually um, our future doctors to have a grateful time in Ireland. Um, so actually, there wasn't a lot of uh, challenges initially when I came. So I felt actually welcomed from the beginning. Things were going smooth and easy from the beginning, uh, either through the RCPI or with Castle Education. So I had, so my pathway was known. Uh, the initial thing, but probably the most difficult thing, and, um, and I think like uh, most of people actually know that is that the accommodation initially to establish a well accommodation that usually takes a bit of time, but by the end, once you settle, everything goes smooth. And then like once you start and you get settled in the hospital, probably because we come from a different culture. So probably the first thing you need to adapt and to find a way how to get through the culture. Um, other than this, the whole people, like everybody's friendly. Um, I never had an offer an answer. So people try to help you as much as you can. Uh, and um, um, other than this, like everything was well structured and well known by the time I actually began my, my fellowship and my two years uh, career. That's great. Thank you very much, Dr. al -Karouf. Danielle, I'm gonna hand over this next one to you. So we had a candidate asking what the entry requirements to our fellowships in obstetrics and gynecology are. Yeah, so um, they're very similar to our general entry requirements. So you will have had to have completed your undergraduate degree through English, um, completed an internship, for one year and also have completed part one and part two of your board exams, either Saudi boards, Arab boards, the Kuwait boards or the Oman boards and also completed the exams that go along with those um, and then also completed the residency program in obstetrics, obstetrics and gynecology. That's perfect. Thank you, Danielle. So Dr. al -Karouf, um, some of the candidates are interested in hearing a little bit more about your clinical experience in Ireland. Could you tell us about that? Oh, okay. There's actually a lot, a lot of things to talk about. So uh, this is an important thing that you need to discuss with your trainer actually from the beginning. So you need to have a sort of like a map. I won't say a map. I would say like, like you need to do like a list for the first year, what you need to do. And for your second year, what you need to focus on. So my clinical exposure was really good. So by the time I started, I knew what, for example, because like I'm doing labor, labor ward management. So I knew like how to divide my work, working time between uh, clinical and non-clinical and clinical. So I managed to do a couple of clinics and a couple of labor ward sessions. And then the same, same time, uh, theater. So let's say, for example, I dedicated like two or three days in, uh, for a labor ward uh, sessions in the labor ward a day or two um for the clinic and one day for theater so approximately th that's the thing and the most important is that sorry yeah sorry um another thing is important is that the on calls i think on calls are really important um i managed to do on calls and i focused today to, to have my on calls during the weekends because of weekdays i was mainly like like literally busy with, with the sessions that i used to take um, I managed as well because like we finished our programs and, um, and boards. So in, as you know, like most of the hospitals are teaching hospital. So I managed as well also like took, took some academic part as well as teaching students, uh, doing uh, monthly teaching, um, organizing some meetings as well or clinical risk meeting. So these are important things that actually 
can help you and establish like your career and take like good and well, it's good for you as well when you go back you know uh, um, so that's the thing like you need the most important thing I would say that uh, you need to discuss with your trainer like how would you divide your work uh, progress for the first year the first so the second year the most important thing as well is like don't expect you'll do everything from the beginning and by the time you blend in and you become part of the team basically then things will ease up um, in, a, in an easy way so just take your time manage yourself put a plan and then things will go smoothly brilliant thank you very much dr al karif thank you we are joined by dr connell dennedy Dr. Dennedy is a consultant endocrinologist at University Hospital Galway and a clinical lead for our International Clinical Fellowship Program in Endocrinology. So I'm going to direct a couple of questions to Dr. Dennedy now. Um, so Dr. Dennedy, what do you think are the key strengths of postgraduate medical training in Ireland? Yeah, we have a very good case mix of patients in the country, um, and we're very, very well set up to deliver endocrinology training um, across a number of interested sites. Uh, we're also able to give, um, we're able to give, uh, uh, you know, subspecialty training in areas such as thyroid, thyroid cancer, pituitary disease, uh, adrenal disease, um, with very well set up infrastructure networks across the country. I think a strength of, of the country is that we work as a single unit throughout the entire country. So even though we have several different hospitals, which are centers of excellence, all of those hospitals interlink with one another and all of those hospitals um, are able to provide uh, specific training to, to postgraduates um, who come to, to train with us. Um, and I think one of the most important things that we have that um, is not necessarily available to other um, international training programs is that we have very specific, um, a, a very specific curriculum laid down. Um, we've given a great amount of thought as to what is the minimum, optimum, and uh, a, a minimum and optimum requirement for a fellow in order to ensure that they are the best qualified product that is able to go back to their home country, not just as a clinician or a registrar plus, but somebody who is able to go back as a consultant and as a future leader. And that is very, very important. And we you know, ensure that training beyond just clinical training is provided. We also give training in audit. We give training in leadership skills. We give training in resilience and we give training in research and ethics. So um, they would be the strengths that I would uh, consider, as well as the fact that you're on the basis of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of training. Uh, remember that the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland, along with the Royal College of Physicians in the UK, were the two institutions internationally where medical training originated. Um, so, you know, that is a boast and a strength that we have that can never be taken away from us. Absolutely. So could I ask then what advice you'd give to candidates that are hoping to apply for our clinical fellowship programs over the next couple of weeks? So what would you look for in a strong application? Um, so one of the first things that we look for in a strong application is that obviously you have your board examinations and you're trained in general internal medicine. So you have to get the basics right. The second thing is that you should have your English um, exam, your, your English exams cleared. Um, and even I, I'm not even sure if they're currently a requirement, but at the moment, in order to get into the country and in order to practice within the country, you must have your English exams cleared. Um, so really, you're going nowhere without those. Um, after that, you know, the way that we set up the um, questioning during the, um, the interview is that we ask you a certain number of questions to see, are you a suitable leader? We ask you a certain number of questions that looks at um, your honesty and your integrity. And then we ask you a certain number of questions which evaluates how well you're able to manage patients. So we present you with clinical scenarios. So um, if you're a strong um, uh, individual and if you have ticked all the boxes all along with your training um, and you're an honest individual, uh, we will scratch beneath the surface in the interview and we will um, look for those characteristics in everybody that comes into us. 
So they're the, the characteristics that make you strong. You know, we want we want somebody with integrity to come to our our uh, uh, our our, um, our program because it's it's not just about you being trained. While you're being trained, you're given the responsibility to look after patients, and that is a, a great responsibility. And it is in turn our responsibility to make sure that those who come and look after patients within our country. Um, are responsible and competent in order to do so. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, we have a question here about endocrine oncology and whether that's available as a subspecialty in Ireland. Yes, it is. Um, so endocrine oncology is something that we're very strong on. So, for example, adrenal oncology is looked after between um, my centre in Galway and uh, Beaumont Hospital. Neuroendocrine tumor oncology is looked after between Galway, Cork and St. Vincent's University Hospital. In fact, we have been part of um, a, a short life working group with the Royal College of uh, Surgeons in Ireland in order to make sure that the surgery and the national multidisciplinary meetings are appropriately um, run such that every hospital in the country feeds into a large um, virtual multidisciplinary meeting for um, oncology or endocrine oncology. Now, in addition to that, we also have very strong endocrine oncology from the viewpoint of thyroid, which is uh, run uh, in, in every center around the country. We, you know, everybody has a thyroid, um, a thyroid oncology center. Um, and um, then um, in terms of that, um, St. Uh, James's and Tala Hospital have a very strong um, endocrine oncology from the, the thyroid viewpoint um, um, set up. And so therefore, um, the two uh, consultants who predominantly look after that have now written a very good curriculum. Um, which is applicable for those that look for subspecialty training. So should somebody come in to look for endocrine oncology in this country, we would sit down with the fellow themselves. Um, we would evaluate what they themselves wanted. And over a two-year program, they would rotate through, in the first instance, about six months of general uh, endocrinology in order to make sure that they are uh, properly competent in general endocrinology prior to going on to their subspecialty. And then we would probably um, rotate them, depending on the wants and needs of that fellow and the wants and needs of the country that they're going back to, we would rotate them through thyroid, neuroendocrine, um, and adrenal oncology. Perfect. And on the subspecialty um, fellowship programs that are available with RCPI, um, I write in thinking what you like to see is a two year fellowship in the general specialty before you would consider someone for subspecialty training. That's correct. You have to have done a two year um, um, general specialty training. And if you come with the two years general specialty training uh, to us, um, you still have to do six months of um, general endocrinology. Um, six months to a year of general endocrinology before you will get in Ireland, before you will be given your subspecialty training. That is very, very important for us. Um, and that is non-negotiable. Perfect. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Denny. That was really Thank helpful. You very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so I'm going to, I have a number of questions coming here to the inbox um, that I'm just going to answer a couple myself and I'll pass a few to Danielle and Dr. al Karouf as well. Um, so there was a question around whether we offered surgical fellowships in RCPI and in Ireland, um, there isn't just one postgraduate medical training body that looks after all specialties. There's actually 13 different postgraduate medical training bodies. Six of them sit with RCPI and the rest are then distributed across. So the surgical specialties are actually offered through the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, but they do offer clinical fellowship positions like ourselves. So I'd suggest that um, if you are interested in surgery, you just have a look at their website and you'll be able to find out what specialties they're offering there. There was a question as well about the IELTS. So Danielle, I might give this one to you um, to clarify. Um, a, a candidate has asked whether the overall, um, what, what the overall score is and then what the minimum in each domain is for the IELTS. Yep, so you must have an overall score of seven and then in each area, it can be no less than 6.5. Perfect. Thank you very much, Danielle. Um, 
So Dr. Al Karouf, I'd like to hand this one to you. Um, I'd just like to find out whether you had the opportunity to participate in research as part of your fellowship training in Ireland. Yes, uh, thank you, Tamsha. So uh, basically, yes, I did. Um, so I was like with, within my curriculum, I was actually supposed or required to do one research within these, these two years and at least an audit uh, uh, within each year. And that's, I think, um, the audit is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is actually required for each NCHD in, in Ireland as part of the training program. However, I managed to do these two, but research is really important. And I think because like, uh, we're not actually trained a lot, and I'm talking about myself in general, I don't know if things have changed, but my, myself, I wasn't really trained in. So I had the opportunity here to get proper training in research and my, my supervisor or my trainer actually helped me a lot. So I managed to do um, actually six publications during my stay in Ireland. So that was good actually for, two, for a two year program. So it's important to sit with your, with your supervisor from the beginning, from day one, and just decide on what research you want, you want to do. It depends. Do you want to do something related to your actually field or something just, just like if you have an interest in something? And then set your goal, like within how many months do you want to actually finish your research and then publish? And then you can actually collaborate with other people. So you don't need actually to be a primary author for all the six researches. You can be a contributor as well. So if you find someone like and you do, you might have a time as well to help. You can you can contribute and help with other people as well. And by the end, you'll be have you'll be awarded the, with the research. So I managed myself to do three publication as a primary author and three contributors. So uh, that's why, like I was saying, so just decide and see if anyone needs help with anything, and then set your goals from day one. And then things will be fine by the end. So like the hospital is really supportive in research. Um, ethical committee can, can approve your research within a few days. And the records are really, they're really, really helpful. They can give you like the strong, good data for any, any like for the past you know, five years, 10 years. So yes, I gained a lot actually with research and audit. Absolutely. I think more probably than a lot of trainees on our programs. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Awesome. Um, so thank you, Dr. al -Karouf. There's a couple more questions that I'll just answer quickly here. So we had one query about whether we offer uh, maternal medicine as part of our obstetrics clinical fellowship program. And, and yes, we do. We offer that fellowship. Um, there's a query here about the OET and what the minimum score in that is. And it's a uh, a score of B in the OET that we would accept, um, or the IELTS, as Danielle said, overall seven, minimum 6.5 in each domain. There is a query here also then about a candidate that's interested in a GI fellowship and then subspecializing in their third year. So Danielle, I might um, let you answer this question that they have. They've asked whether they have to pass the membership exam at the end of their second year to access subspecialty training and if there are any other requirements to progress to subspecialty training. Yeah, so um, we, we do encourage all of our trainees to take the membership exams while they're in Ireland, but it won't necessarily stop you from completing a third year if you do pass the first two years and your trainer is happy for you to move on to a subspecialty area. Um, in GI, we, the, any subspecialty areas are subject to availability. So in certain areas like ERCP, um, there's a very limited number of places available in Ireland. So that would, we'd have that discussion around interview time, whether there would be a position available for that subspecialty um, when you get to that area, when you get to that point. So to progress to a third year, there's no real requirements other than completing your first two years successfully. Um, and you do not have to get the MRCPI, but we do encourage it for all trainees. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, I have a question here about whether or not you could apply if you're in your final couple of months of residency training and you don't yet have your board exam. So the, the short answer is yes, you can apply. Um, the longer answer is we're going to be interviewing for the positions across kind of September to December time. And the panel then would make a decision based on how long it's going to take you to complete your residency training and get your board exam around whether or not it would 
consider you for interview and whether or not they'd offer you a position on the program. And it really would depend on the specialty itself. So we have had situations in the past where program directors have interviewed candidates where they're, they are in the final months of their training and have offered a position contingent on you finishing training and getting your board exam. But you would have other program directors then that would just say no for this specialty. You'd have to have everything in place at the time of application. Um, so I'd encourage you to apply and it would then be up to the program director. Um, that um, attendee has also asked whether we offer a clinical fellowship in advanced medical dermatology. And yes, we do offer that specialty. So I'm just going to have a look at the other questions that we have here. Um, we have quite a few coming in. So someone has asked then when the applications open. We're going to be opening for applications on the 1st of August. So that's this coming Sunday. Um, we'll be open then for three weeks. Um, there's a question then about self-sponsored candidates. Um, so they've asked whether or not it's possible to self-sponsor or whether there has to be government sponsorship in place. And I can confirm that there does have to be government sponsorship in place and it's not possible to accept self-sponsored trainees onto this particular program with or CPI. Um, I'm gonna, there's a question here then, Danielle, that I'm gonna ask you to answer if you don't mind. A candidate has asked if they can apply for more than one specialty. Um, there are no rules saying that you cannot apply for more than one specialty. However, we would recommend that you just apply for the one specialty that you are most interested in. Um, I think that if you were to attend an interview and the interview panel knew that you were also interested in other specialties, it, it wouldn't be ideal. They, they do really want to know that you have a keen interest in the specialty that you're interviewing for. So we would strongly recommend that you just pick one specialty to apply for. Perfect. Um, I have another question here then where a doctor is asking whether the clinical fellowship program in public health is two or three years long. Yep, so it's um, in total, it's a three year program. The first year is an actual full time master's in public health, which is undertaken in um, University College Dublin. So you'll do one year in a master's of public health and then the final two years are curriculum based clinical training and um, where you'll be with our public health department in Ireland. So it's three years in total, one year of academic and two years of clinical. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, I have a query here from a doctor from Oman then who has asked um, just about whether or not they can apply on their slides. There's been delays around the scholarship program and whether or not they can apply. My understanding is that you can apply. Um, so from our side, we understand that not everyone will have their sponsorship at the time of application. And we would just um, need you to have the sponsorship within the time frame that we gave to you after you've been offered a position. So for us, we're happy to accept applications from doctors in Oman. That's no problem at all. Um, I have another couple of questions from, I think a different doctor in Oman here, whether the Oman Medical Specialty Board is accepted for entry to clinical fellowship training. And yes, it is. I, I think maybe this, this attendee didn't um, join at the very start. So I'm just gonna review a couple of pieces for them. The, I've mentioned the open date for applications is the 1st of August. You, they've asked if you have to register with the Irish Medical Council in order to be accepted onto a fellowship program. And I can confirm you don't have to register to be accepted onto the program. You would register after you were offered a position. Um, there's a question then around the sponsorship and whether you would need that before application. So no, that's okay for you to submit sponsorship afterwards. And they've asked us to tell us a little bit more about the IELTS prep courses that are provided in Ireland. Would you mind, Danielle, just giving a really brief overview of the service then that Castell provides doctors that we've offered clinical fellowship positions to? Yeah, so um, if we offer a position to a doctor and they do not have the English language exam yet, we will refer you straight over to Castell Education. 
and they have private tutors where you'll be given one-on-one -on -one tutoring in the exam that you choose to take. So you can either take the, the IELTS or the OET. And they're very, um, they have lots of experience in preparing people for these exams. If you don't pass the first exam, they'll go over your results with you and help you improve the next round of exams. So they're really helpful with you from every step of the way from studying for the exams and then making improvements if necessary. Um, and they'll work with you for free. Um, you know, I think most people will do weekly sessions to get themselves prepared. So that, that service will be offered to anyone who's offered a position and doesn't have the English language yet. That's great. Thank you. We have a question here then just about the duration of the pediatric neurology program. So would you be able to confirm that? Yeah, so our pediatric neurology programs are two years and you'll be based in the Dublin Hospitals, Children's Hospital for two years. That's perfect. Um, we have a couple of questions here just around whether the English language is required at the time of registration or can be added later on. And I can confirm it isn't required at the time of application. You can submit that to us later on. Um, there's also a question here about what fellowships are available to doctors that have the board in family medicine. And I can confirm that the specialties available under those, those circumstances are public health medicine, occupational medicine, clinical microbiology, palliative medicine, and rehab medicine. So, um, Dr. Al Karouf, I would just like to ask you. Um, to share with our attendees today what you're going to miss about Ireland when you move back to Saudi? Ah, oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> it's actually, I miss a lot of things. So I established good, uh, uh, established good uh, friendships around the country. So I'm going to miss like friends I made here, colleagues in the hospital. I'm going to miss uh, you guys, definitely. And um, I'm going to miss as well, like the like the, the hospital atmosphere and the, the routine that I, I got used to and how I was like actually, um, like I was trained and the time, like the time I was given each week to do presentations and the teachings I used to give for everybody. And I had really good time here, you know? So there isn't something like, I don't know, like I miss a lot of things, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to say what exactly, what point something. And the country is really nice. like. I've been around, I haven't had the chance to go a lot, like through Ireland, you know, the COVID situation for the past almost two years now, or more than a year, actually. But in generally, I'm going to miss almost everything. It's sad to leave, <clears throat> but I'm happy as well, like, because I gained a lot of knowledge here, and then I'll help in, for implementing my, what I've learned back home as well. So at least, like, that's why I was saying to you guys that I'm having, like, mixed feelings about going and leaving. Absolutely. That's understandable. After yeah. being here. Yeah, absolutely. And again, like, thank you guys for everything. Like, you made everything easy and clear and nice as well. No. Um, thank you for us. It's been fantastic to have you. And we really look forward to keeping in touch, hopefully seeing you back in Ireland, maybe visiting you in Riyadh. Oh, yeah, you're most welcome. <laughs> you're most welcome. <laughs> yeah, that would be lovely to keep in touch. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, and thanks for everybody as well, Danielle oh, and the, the crew. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I have another question here then, just around whether there's an adult infectious diseases fellowship available and what the duration of that is. So Danielle, would you be able to take that one? Yeah, so we do have an adult infectious diseases um, program and the duration is generally two years. Um, and we may have availability for three years, but at the moment it's a two year program. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, so we have a couple of questions coming in here. Um, so we have one question actually about a subspecialty fellowship in hematology. So Danielle, would you be able to tell us whether we have any subspecialty fellowships in hematology at the moment? Yeah, so at the moment, we only offer a general um, program in haematology. So we don't actually offer any of the subspecialty programs. 
Um, I'm not sure of the exposure that you would receive during that program, but at the moment, it's just a haematology program, not any subspecialties. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a question here around whether we offer an adult rheumatology fellowship program, and I can confirm that yes, we do. It's two years to three years in duration. Um, there's a question here then around whether candidates should attach their sponsorship papers um, at the point of application or after they're accepted. And either of those is fine with us. So if you don't have it at the time of application, that's fine. We would just give you the time frame within which we would need to have the full sponsorship confirmed before you would start in post in Ireland. So I, I want to, I think we're going to leave it there. There's a couple more questions coming in that we're going to be able to answer afterwards. As Danielle mentioned, this session is going to be available on our website. So any questions that we haven't had the chance to answer today, we'll, we'll record separately and just upload at the end of that overall recording. Um, Dr. al Karouf, I'd just like to thank you very much for being with us here today and, and for sharing your experience. Um, with thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Best of luck with the move back home. Thank you. Thank you. Looking yeah. forward to it. You again. And thank you everyone for attending. It's been great to have you. I hope you found um, this webinar useful. Again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions that you haven't had the chance to express or that we haven't answered, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our general email is internationalaffairs at orcpi.ie. And our individual emails are available on our clinical fellowship webpage on the RCPI website. So thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, everyone. I hope to see some of you soon. Take care.